Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 243, recorded on June 1st, 2022. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. We start this week with some good news. The LVFS project has served more than 52 million firmware downloads to Linux users. Now, for a little perspective, that was just 25 million this time last year. That's an impressive rate of growth. It sure is, and Red Hat's Richard Hughes is still running the project, and he presented a bunch of different bits of data at the Embedded Recipes 2022 conference. For instance, we learned that LVFS is up to more than 120 different hardware partners. And more recently, LVFS kicked off the FWAPD Friendly Firmware Initiative. The goal with this new initiative is to help hardware partners that already have FWAPD plugins available. You can imagine how this becomes a little more important with larger hardware manufacturing adoption, like, say, Google's Chromebooks and other devices requiring FWAPD support as part of their certification process. Also this week, speaking of FWAPD, version 1.8.1 was released. That's the back-end software side to LVFS. Among a range of bug fixes and improvements was support for more Thunderbolt and USB-C docks, which is really nice to see, because those devices, unfortunately, do require firmware updates. If you were a little quick to jump on the latest Linux release, 5.18, like a certain Chris Fisher was, well, new benchmarkers out there may have noticed a performance regression. Michael Larable over at Pharonix sure noticed it, and as he puts it, bisected it. <laughs> he sure did, and in kind of his classic way, he tracked it down to some memory management changes in Linux 5.18. And in particular, the LRU cache disable change. But thankfully, it turns out Red Hat's Marcelo Tosati was already way ahead of him, and back in March created a patch to fix the issue. And like some of our most favorite patches, this one is just a really simple one-liner. A simple but important change. That's now on its way to the mainline kernel via Andrew Morton's memory management patch series, and should be backported for Linux 5.18. We'll have a link to more coverage by Pharonix if you're curious, including the benchmarks that demonstrate the issue. Following up on the recent open source NVIDIA driver news, the Nouveau project has begun laying the groundwork to adapt its code into a standalone library. So far, the work seems to be focused on restructuring the basic way that Nouveau's Mesa driver code is generated, making it possible that that generated code can actually function and live in a standalone library. Red Hat's David Arlisle stated, quote, This just moves the code gen build into a separate library. This is just prep work for a future where another driver wants to reuse this code. This isn't perfect for plugging into a Vulkan driver, but doing that requires more in-depth surgery. Yeah, and as Christian explained to us just a few weeks ago, NVIDIA is going to need several open source user space components that can speak to all of the exposed kernel interfaces. Yeah, really, kind of seems that they would benefit by using as much of the Nouveau project as possible. And this is kind of just the first small step to starting that effort. Yeah. I mean, I think this gives us our first real sense from the outside of just how much fundamental work is ahead for this team. You know, a glimpse of just all of the things that need to be done. And maybe that's why personally, to me, this is looking like a multi-year project at least. Matrix fans were pleased to see the team at Rocket Chat announce plans to build new, federated features on top of the Matrix protocol. If you're not familiar, you could consider Rocket Chat an open source alternative to Slack, I suppose. So this is pretty great to see, because really, the last thing we needed is another standard from another project and how we should federate all of our different chat systems. And I think Rocket Chat was clever to acknowledge that they're going to benefit from the growing network effect Matrix is seeing as well. Yeah, right? I mean, this move means Rocket Chat users should be able to communicate with anyone who's already using a Matrix-compatible chat client. That means you don't have to throw out your existing clients, you don't have to throw out your Rocket Chat infrastructure, but you still get all the benefits of a true, cross-platform, secure, standards-based chat. This really is so great. And it sounds like the Rocket Chat team chose to use Dendrite, for their Matrix backend, that's a more modern backend of the server, so that's a savvy choice on their part. And they also touched on the importance of openness and users having control over their own data. 
And they mention in their release announcement that that need is growing now more than ever, stating, quote, the European Union's recent Digital Markets Act to limit the market power of large online chat and messaging platforms is evidence of this need. Impressively, just one week after Red Hat Enterprise 9's general availability, Alma Linux 9 is now here and out. Alma Linux 9 has now arrived. Like the RHEL 9 it's based on, Alma Linux 9.0 ships kernel version 5.14 and contains enhancements around cloud and container development and improvements to the web console cockpit. This release also features additional security profiles that greatly improve SE Linux performance, as well as Python 3.9, GCC 11, and the latest versions of LLVM, Rust, and Go. Linode.com slash LAN. Go there to get $100 in 60-day credit on a new account. And of course, you go there to support Linux Action News. So it's Linode.com slash LAN. They make it simple, affordable, and accessible to deploy and manage your projects, your infrastructure in the cloud. And they do it better than anyone for a better price and better performance. That's the bottom line right there. They also have fantastic support. I hear that all the time when the audience gets stuck. Linode's helped them out. And they just posted a white paper. It's really a full report. And it's a free PDF download, no email required, none of that stuff. I'll link it in the show notes. And they've gone through in this report, a third party has, and they have benchmarked AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and Linode's GPU-based virtual machines. And they've done this using standardized and repeatable testing methodologies that they've used for all different kinds of industry benchmarks. A wide range of workloads was tested. And you, you can probably guess, Linode always, always comes out on top. They have systems powered by AMD Epic processors, powerful GPU systems, powerful GPU systems. And of course, they have NVMe storage for boxes that just have incredible IOPS. But if you're looking for something to just host a personal website, a blog, a portfolio, a gaming server, or you're looking for something that can handle millions of users, Linode's got you there too. They've got some of the best performance with 11 data centers you can choose from, something that's going to be close to you or your customers. And they have great features on top of that, which have really brought our game up, like object storage, Terraform support, Ansible support, Cloud Firewall, great, simple to understand backups that are crazy easy to recover from, all of that. So go build something, go learn something, go support the show, go see why we deploy all of our stuff on Linode. Just go to linode.com slash LAN. And this episode is made possible by your direct support, jupiter.party. You can support the network directly and support our independent content creation with your membership. As a thank you, you'll get access to ad-free versions of all of our shows, including Linux Action News, as well as access to the special edition feeds. It's jupiter.party. You go sign up, you get access to all the shows, and your support makes a real difference. The NixOS project surprised those in the world who were not following the project's inner workings closely when it announced a new release, version 2205, with a complete graphical installer. Now, in case you've never installed NixOS, traditionally, the way you do it is a direct process right on the command line. This new graphical installer, though, it's built atop the Calamari's installer framework. Calamari's is a free and open source, independent and distro agnostic installer. If you've ever installed Garuda, Manjaro, Netrunner, KDE Neon, Endeavor OS, or use Debian's live medium installer option, then you have probably used Calamari's. And well, no longer will you have to hunt for some special ISO. Now the Plasma and Gnome ISO images for NixOS feature a fully updated graphical installer. Now you could still opt to grab the minimal ISO, which keeps that traditional command line approach, if that's your style. But of course, Wes and I had to give this a go before the show. Yeah, you know us. We got to try the new Shiny. I should say that as a new Nix user, I'm kind of impressed this is possible at all. You know, when I started down the Nix OS journey, I was kind of just taking it for granted that much like the early days of Arch, this was going to be a command line process. I don't mind that. The Nix OS install is actually pretty straightforward once you, you know, figure out how Nix works at all. But having an installer is a huge win 
for new users, for quickly trying out system settings, or just to start your system before you've gotten fully to grasp with the Nix expression language. And, you know, what also makes this really neat to my developer-focused eyes is because this is declarative, because it's Nix-based, you can go take a look at the PR and see everything. You don't have to go hunt through six different build things or a bunch of different repos on GitHub or on some distribution-specific server or source control system. No, you can check out all the changes, all the patches that were needed, the sort of custom Calamari's extensions that, that were developed. All of that is in one spot, in one PR, on GitHub. And that, that right there, it's the power of NixOS. Yeah, that does make it really simple to understand everything that's happening behind the scenes. I kind of like you was thinking, well, they're never going to do a graphical installer because you kind of learn how Nix works by installing Nix. <laughs> you have to. And so I thought, well, they're going to keep it this way forever because you got to learn these basics to use the distro at all. But uh, we then kind of had a hint coming our way because the developer who ported this to Nix OS has been hanging out in our Nix Nerds Matrix chat room, which is a great chat room. And they tease some of this, but it just wasn't really clear would it actually ship, when would it ship if it did. And then, you know, it, it just dropped and it was we were all very excited. And so I had a chance to ask them a couple of brief questions and just kind of find out where they're going with this. In our Matrix room, they go by Vlinks. And I asked them why they went to the trouble to bring a GUI installer to such a pro-user-focused distro. They replied, quote, My main goal was to make it easier for new people to install and try NixOS, while also making it easier for others like me, who, even though we could install through the terminal, prefer a simple click-through installation. I can relate to that. You know, I was becoming more comfortable with the idea and getting a little bit faster each time at installing NixOS via the command line. and. Once you kind of just even get casually familiar with it, you know, it's like a 15-minute install process. It's not a big deal. But I got to admit, after trying the GUI install approach, I do prefer that method. For one, it's just kind of how I install pretty much almost every other distro. And I tend to do something else while I'm installing a Linux distro. It's not like the thing that has my sole focus, right? So a GUI, it helps me kind of keep track of my state. and keep an overview of what I'm actually doing. And so I asked Vlinks, like, is this something you plan to maintain over time? Because I imagine once you release something like this out there to the wild, there's going to be bug fixes that come in and, you know, features that need to be added. Right. And, you know, changes that might break things, maintenance to do, new NixOS releases to keep up with. But uh, Vlinks responded, quote, I definitely plan to keep working on it and similar projects. I've heard some people mention they'd like a way to import GitHub configs during installation. So if I make more changes to the installer, that would probably be what I work on. But I plan on ensuring that the installer stays stable for a while to come. Now that it's been released, I plan to try to upstream some of the changes to the main Calamari's project as well. That's great. And there's a few things that would be nice to see get tweaked over time, like just small stuff, like potentially the default image on the live session maybe could have a longer power timeout because it's pretty likely that your system's going to start going to sleep before the install's over. So you got to wake it up right during installation. Or if you're on Wi-Fi, if you're not plugged in, the installer will come up and say you have no internet so you can't proceed. Even after you've connected to internet, you have to close the installer and relaunch it. Small quality of life things, but you could see people making small patches over time to clean this stuff up. So I just think that's a fantastic answer. And the fact that Vlinx is planning to upstream all of that stuff, too, means that these other distros are going to get the benefit. This is the stuff you just love about free software. And also, Vlinx said, kind of implied, with a few links, that they were working on some other projects to make NixOS even more new user-friendly. Yeah, they noted, quote, I'm currently working on a graphical configuration editor. Overall, I hope someday that even non-terminal users can take advantage of all the features Nix and NixOS offer. Yeah, we're going to have to throw a link to that Nix config editor in the show notes. It sure looks neat. I mean, I only took a very quick look at it, but I like where it's headed. It's a simple NixOS configuration editor application built with Libidueta, GTK4, and Realm 4. 
that lets you adjust common Nix settings without having to totally understand exactly how to compose a Nix expression yourself. Yep, just one more thing that's going to make it even more approachable to folks. And I get a real sense that these goals, they're not just like the goals of one developer in the project. I believe they're the goals of many developers in the project and that they want to bring Nix and Nix OS to new users. And maybe they're not really saying it out loud, but I kind of get a sense that they're trying to appeal to a, a Fedora user. Yeah, talking to them, and reading through the discussions on GitHub, you really do get that impression. They want to offer one of the best development workstations in Linux. And these are some of the steps they're taking to get there. And I got to say, I'm, I'm kind of bolstered both by the, the support from the community after Vlinx, you know, sort of spearheaded this effort. And then also just how far this has come with not that much support or involvement for the community. I mean, that just says to me, some of the power and support from the NixOS environment should really set up some future goals for success. I agree. And the tooling, like distro agnostic installers, just getting better and better to make this stuff possible. It's it's fascinating to watch. It really is. We we you know NixOS has been around for a decade, and all of a sudden there is just all of this momentum here, and more and more people, including us, have been checking it out. It's just one of the many steps to making just the ultimate developer workstation, really the power user workstation, and we just have more choices than ever. We'll keep an eye on it, just like we do for everything in the free and open source world. So be sure you go to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact to tell us all about the neat things you're doing with NixOS. We've got a summer of projects here at Jupiter Broadcasting, and we're documenting all of it in Office Hours, my new show, officehours.hair. As for this show, well, don't worry, we'll be back next week with our take on the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. And that's all the news for this week. <laughs>